welcome back. We'll now start reading Genesis chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is, it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellum and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is it which goeth towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and bought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all of cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we're going to go ahead and discuss Genesis chapter 2. The chapter starts out with the word thus. Thus is an adverb meaning hence. And in this instance, another way to say hence would be to start the sentence out saying because of what just happened. So we're at the beginning of Genesis chapter 2. And what this is saying is because of what just happened in chapter 1 with all the creation, heaven and earth were finished, including the host or the occupants of earth. Because of what just happened, heaven, earth, and all of the occupants within this creation were finished. This answers the question, are there any other life forms? Well, here 
the creation that God made consists of the creatures on in the heavens and in the earth. So those are the only creatures that God created because after he created them, he started off with chapter two saying this is finished. Verse two, God ended his work and he rested on the seventh day. God blessed the seventh day, acknowledging that he created the earth and the heavens. Plant life was growing unmanaged and there was no man to till the ground. So there was a water source that was a mist sprouting out of the earth. God had not caused rain to fall on the earth yet to water the plants. So this mist is what was keeping everything alive. Then God created man from dust, breathed life into his nostrils, and man became a living soul. God created Eden and put man there. God made each type of tree, including the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's, I'd like to underscore a sidebar and expand on an idea. The question, why would God create the tree of good and evil? The fall of man would not have occurred if the tree of evil had not been created. That seems simple enough. But the tree of good and evil and the tree of life are opposites. They're opposed, they have opposing functions or opposing outcomes if Adam or man were to consume them. The tree of good and evil in chapter 2 verse 17 causes death when consumed. But the tree of life is the tree of life. It's the opposite. Every creation so far exists through opposing functions. So to answer this question of why the tree of knowledge of good and evil was created, we're going to review all of the other creations before we move forward. So the first creation was light versus darkness. Darkness was the default state of the earth, and light was introduced as an invention to modify and organize darkness. We have heaven and we have earth. Heaven was the firmament created. Heaven is upward. It, en it encompasses the sky. Earth is the planet or the container of all of God's creation. We are bound to the earth with gravity and man has complete dominion over the earth. Man does not have dominion over the heaven or the sky. the seas and the land. The seas are wet and the earth or the land is dry. Two opposing ideas that were created. Once God had to organize the seas, dry land was created. A dry land would not exist without seas because to define what dryness is, it, you have to have water. It means without water. The next thing invented was the sun and the moon. The sun is bright. The sun is associated with daytime, while the moon is a dimmer light and is associated with nighttime. Then we have plants and animals. Plants are rooted to one spot. They do not eat. Instead, they process elements of rain and sun for food. Animals are able to move. They've been given plant life to eat. Then we have the marine life versus fowl. Fowl were given access to the open firmament or the sky, but both. Man does not have dominion over the open firmament, the sky, or the sea. Marine life is bound to the sea or the earth by gravity, but fowl or birds were given the permission and the ability to defy gravity and to be in the sky. Then we have cattle versus the creeping thing and the beast. Cattle are four-footed animals that roams the earth upright. Cattle are a direct, concise, easily describable group of animals, whereas the creeping thing, well, to creep, Creeping things move slowly with the body close to the ground instead of standing upright like the cattle do. 
creeping things move in a way to avoid being noticed, whereas cattle don't have that same element. And the beast is also a direct opposite of the cattle because beasts are something difficult to control or deal with, whereas cattle are easily domesticated. Then we have the last opposing set of creations, male versus female. Male was created by dust and female was created through man. With these opposing ideas, there is no light without dark. There is no dry without wet. Nothing on earth can exist without the opposite. Defining things in this realm is completed by specifying what it is. Specific requirements define what things are. Definitions are exclusionary. Criteria must be met in order to fit into a term. So the term dry means free or relatively free of liquid or water. The term wet means consisting of, containing, covered with, or soaked with water. Wet what, or water is the default nature of this earth. So dryness was introduced as a way to manage water. But dryness could not exist without water. Then when we look at light and dark, light means Light is something that provides vision improvement, whereas darkness is the absence of light. Darkness was the, sorry about that, I know it's inappropriate. Uh, darkness was the default of Earth. It was the default state of Earth. Light was introduced as a way to manage darkness. Creating anything on Earth automatically creates opposition to said creation. So when thinking like this, this would make sense why every time God created something, he stopped, he made a determination of value, he observed his creation, made a determination of value, and then continue on creating. Because every time he made a creation, there was an automatic opposite that he had to manage and make sure it was good. With this, with this being said, thus, we revisit Genesis chapter two, verse nine, the tree of life versus the tree of good and evil. The tree of good and evil results in death. The tree of life results in life. God created plant life in Genesis one, verse 11. He created grass, herb yielding seed and the fruit tree. But that's all he said. He did not specify what types of trees. So he didn't say, let's create trees except for the tree of good and evil. He just said, let's create trees. And as they came and he stopped and observed, now he sees what, what everything is after it comes. So God commanded these trees to grow but the conditions or the laws of this earth default to creating opposing ideas without, specific, without being specific. So if there's no specific direction and you just say create trees, everything will grow. So Eden has every plant and every animal and it's the best place to witness all creation. This is God's first time managing humans. So God took Adam and explained that he's not allowed to eat the fruit of good and evil. This was considered telling both Adam and Eve because in verse 24, it says here, man and wife are one flesh. So there was no need for God to then tell Eve because God told Adam and Adam is one flesh. So he's going to communicate that to Eve. And this was sufficient. So we want to move on from the tree of good and evil. The next thing that happens is from Eden, there was a river that flowed to provide water to the garden. And this river split into four additional bodies of water. There's Pison, the land that it's associated with is Havila. And the resources on this land is gold, bedellum, and onyx. 
The second body of water is Gihon. The land associated with it is Ethiopia. The third body of water is Hedekel. The land that is associated with it uh, is Assyria. It flows east of Assyria. And then the last river is the Euphrates. Adam was put in Eden to maintain this garden. God gave Adam instruction not to eat the tree of good and evil, but the tree of life was free for consumption. In verse 18, God says that it's not good for man to be alone. So, in addition to maintaining land, Adam was given the responsibility of naming the animals God created. After bringing each of these animals to Adam, God determined that none of these animals were proper companions for a helpmeet. And Adam was still, there was something still missing from Adam's life. So God put Adam into a deep sleep, took out a rib, and created woman. Another sidebar I'd like to underscore, this sounds like the first instance of cloning, taking a part of one being and creating a whole new entity or a whole new organism out of one piece of something else. Sounds like cloning. No other creature was created this way but the woman. God created everything else out of its element, except for woman. Woman was created out of man. No plant either. No plants, no animal. Just the woman. She's a special creation. Once the woman was completed, she was brought to Adam, who accepted her immediately. It says here that man shall leave his parents to become one unit with his wife. And the chapter ends with both of them being naked. Some additional ideas that I would like to add before I end the video. Adam is the origin of all humans. Men and women come from this man. And this is still true today with biology. When discussing reproduction, Males have the chromosome XY, female has the chromosome XX. It is the male's DNA that determines the gender of the next offspring because he has both an X and a Y to give, whereas females only have X's to give. So, the first woman came from man, and man is still determining the gender of that will result from reproduction. Number two, Adam was created to have a job in earth. Eve was created as a companion or a helpmeet for Adam. Eve did not have an official assignment other than supporting Adam. We still see that, we still see remnants of that today in American society because males face harsher criticism for not having provision, for not having resources, for not having a job, and much harsher than when women don't have these things. There's a prevalent idea in our culture that women can get provisional needs met if they buy a man if they can't meet it themselves. So that's still there. Then we have chapter 2, verse 18. Specifically, God says, it isn't good for man to be alone, but it doesn't say anything about a woman being alone. And then time. Chapter 2 starts off with God resting the seventh day, but then it wants to go into detail, or it goes into detail on how man was created on the sixth day. Adam was created. He was placed in a beautiful garden. He was given responsibility. Animals were brought before him after God realized it wasn't good for him to be by himself. And then God created woman who was the last creation. I really have enjoyed reading this. I've been getting so much meaning out of it, and I'm so happy to have something productive that really makes me interested. I'm interested in reading. Thank you for watching the video. Hope to see you in the next one.